What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. So it's been a minute since I've had some time to record a video and discuss a topic, but this is one that has come up multiple times. This is one I've been wanting to cover for a long period of time. So let's crack into the most commonly prescribed psychiatric medications. Specifically, this video is going to be on lithium. And I'm likely going to have to break this video up into multiple videos because lithium is actually quite a big topic and a big medication in psychiatry and I'll explain why in this video. So lithium is not only effective, it's also inexpensive. And it's been a treatment for bipolar disorder for a long period of time. Many people will tell you that lithium remains the gold standard of the treat for the treatment of bipolar disorder. Now that has changed a little bit. Some people debate this fact because it tends to be more effective in pure mania, so people who have only manic episodes and do not have the depressive component of bipolar disorder. The, and also it's less effective in people who have mixed states, which would be a, primarily a bipolar disorder with some depressive symptoms, namely at least three depressive symptoms. Rapid cycling, so this is somebody who has four or more mood episodes during the course of a year. That's the definition of rapid cycling. So it's not as good for those people and it also is not as good for those with substance use disorders. And people with bipolar disorder often have comorbid substance use disorders. So we want to be mindful that there are some places where lithium has proven in the literature to be less effective than some of the other options for treating bipolar disorder. However, it remains an excellent medication, a relatively inexpensive medication, and like I said, still by most standards considered the gold standard of treatment. And one of the reasons behind that is because of its ability to reduce the risk of completed suicide. So it doesn't just reduce the risk of suicidal thoughts or ideation, it also reduces the risk of completed suicide. That's a very important point. A little bit of history, I just want to kind of talk about this here in the video because I think it's important to understand where these things come from, how we discovered lithium as an effective treatment for bipolar disorder. So it was actually discovered in Australia by a physician named John Cade, and he reported on this, and specifically the anti-manic properties, in the 1940s. So this goes all the way back to the 1940s, and in the United States it was approved in 1970 and remained the only medication for a decade that we had to treat bipolar disorder. So we had no other medications really to treat bipolar disorder except for this medication, lithium. It's FDA approved in the United States for a few things, specifically mania and the maintenance treatment of bipolar disorder. So that's the phases when people are not necessarily symptomatic, but still require coverage or treatment to prevent future manic episodes. It's commonly used off-label by a lot of psychiatrists to treat bipolar depression specifically, and also as an adjunctive treatment for unipolar depression. Specifically, if you have someone who's unresponsive to other antidepressant medications, and of course, for those with a major suicide risk. If there's a patient that has a high risk for suicide, you're really worried about that person, there's obviously risk in prescribing this medication. We'll talk about why that is later, but there is also a lot of potential benefits for the reduction in completed suicide. Now for women, I've said this in previous videos, but this is an important point that not everyone is aware of. For women with a history of bipolar disorder, there is a high risk for postpartum psychosis, and lithium has demonstrated efficacy and prevention of postpartum psychosis. So this medication can actually be initiated on the first postpartum day in non-breastfeeding mothers. So if they're not, so if the if the person you're treating is not choosing to breastfeed their their baby, then it's perfectly fine to reinitiate this medication right after they give birth. Lithium is also known to be neuroprotective and may have benefits in neurodegenerative disorders. This has been looked at, it hasn't panned out as well as it could, but there is some evidence to support neuroprotective factors and again, for people with neurodegenerative disorders and mild cognitive impairment, there may be some benefit to lithium and again, those, that data is not quite as good as it is for bipolar disorder. Let's talk next about lithium as a naturally occurring salt. Like, where does this come from? Why, why is it so cheap and readily available? 
And that's because, like I said, it's a naturally occurring salt. Its activity actually lies in its ability to affect numerous biochemical reactions. So it doesn't just target one specific area like a lot of drugs. It targets many biochemical reactions and specifically downstream or second messenger processes. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. The standard form of lithium is called lithium carbonate, and it's available both as an immediate release and a sustained release. Now, if you guys have been watching my other videos, you'll know that I'm a fan of extended release or sustained release medications because they have lower serum peak levels, and in this case of lithium, fewer cognitive side effects. So again, if you can use that extended or sustained release formulation, that's preferable over the immediate release, but both are effective so it depends on the person prescribing and the patient's preference. Now the dosing can be done multiple times a day. Most commonly you'll see somebody on like 300 twice a day or 600 twice a day, something like that. But you, you don't necessarily have to do that. And one of the ways I personally like to dose it is to use the sustained or extended release at night in a single dose because it's gonna help the person to sleep it's not going to cause as many of the side effects when taking it at night. Of course, you're using the stain, sustain release to reduce those side effects in many cases. And again, the person doesn't have to remember to take the medication multiple times a day when they're working, taking care of kids, etc. It's a, it's a burden to have to try to remember these things. You obviously want to get a level. The nice thing about lithium in comparison to many other psychiatric medications is we can follow blood levels very accurately. So what you would normally do when you're initiating lithium is you would start the medication and then five days later, and you might ask why five days, five days is just because of the number of half-lives. In order for a medication to reach steady state, it has to have at least five half-lives. So what we want to do is wait five, and the approximate half-life of lithium is one day. So if you break it down, five days, five half-lives would be your, your lithium dosing and then you, what you would see is the blood level at that point and you would want to do that about 12 hours after the last dose. So again, if the person's getting that medication all at night, 12 hours later, you're going to draw blood, you're going to get a lithium level and that's going to tell you whether or not you're in the therapeutic range, whether you're in the toxic range and that's very important because this medication has what we call a narrow therapeutic index. And what that basically means is that if you go too high with the medication, it can definitely cause significant side effects. So you have to be mindful of where those lithium levels are on a regular basis, and that's why we recommend regular follow-up and regular blood draws, just to kind of see and make sure that everything is okay with the levels. Now, a standard level, what you're looking for in order to show that it's become effective, is 0.6 to, to 1.2 milli equivalents per liter and so that's how the lab would show up somewhere in that range usually if it's outside of that range you're worrying about toxicity so that's a that's your typical therapeutic range for adults if you have an older adult say an elderly person with a lower glomerular filtration rate gfr meaning they have lower kidney function you might want to drop that level to 0.4 to 0.8 milli equivalents per liter now a good level of maintenance is probably 0.8. That's a good place to shoot. It's kind of right in the middle between 0.6 and 1.2 in an adult patient. And in the elderly, again, 0.4 is a good number. The lithium level also correlates reliably with efficacy, so that's important. You're not just drawing this level to assess toxicity, you're also drawing this level to assess whether or not the medication is effective. You must also watch out for increased lithium levels with certain medications. And they're very commonly prescribed medications for other conditions. So if the person has a low sodium diet, if the person is on an ACE inhibitor, commonly used for, for blood pressure control, if the person's on a thiazide diuretic, also commonly used for blood pressure control, you end the probably the most common one that people are aware of is NSAIDs, which would be things like ibuprofen, you want to avoid those things in patients taking lithium because it can raise the levels and like I said, these are there's a narrow therapeutic index. You want to be mindful of those levels at all time. I think I'm going to call this video here because this is a nice introduction to lithium. I think it covered a lot of the kind of important background information and details. 
In the next video, I'm going to do the mechanism of action of lithium, and then I'm going to wrap this with a third part that's going to talk about the side effects of lithium because I know that's important to most people and patients. So if these videos are helpful for you, please like and subscribe to the channel. We're always happy to continue making content for you guys. And if you have any questions, please drop them below in the comments section. I will try to get to them as soon as possible.